Okay. Hey, everybody. It is time for that podcast. Look it back. 80s Music Girl with my host, the one and only Lisa Marie. Say hello. Hello. And today, <laughs> Johnny Pace, we have on this show <laughs> a guest that you all may know or you may not know. He is my son. He's one of my sons. He's also AKA Tycoon Will. Say hello to everyone. Hello. Uh, so uh, today is a very special day. Not only is it Saturday the 24th of September, I have no idea what that means, but it's a special day for everyone because, hey, every day above ground is a good one. That's what they say. Uh, <laughs> but I'm here today. We are all here today to quote, well, I'm going to quote a a very prominent philosopher of the 21st century. Uh, perhaps you all may be familiar with his work. Um, it goes a little something like this. It's like spitting on a fish. It's like barking of a tree. It's like I said, if you got to buy one, if you want to get one free. Words to live by by none other than the maestro himself. Weird Al Yankovic. So, Guys, are you excited? Yeah. Okay. This is here. Yes. <laughs> All right. So, um, let's see. Should I do ladies first? I always like to ask the questions. Oh no, the the guest host. You sure? Okay. Oh. If it wasn't for you two, I wouldn't know about any of this. <laughs> okay. Well, then I uh, will start with the with the guest. Uh, I don't know whether to say or, you're or, welcome or I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> <It is. laughs> uh, William, uh, what do you say? What do you what do you say? Uh, what was your first recollection of Weird Al in the 80s as a kid? Uh, so I remember just obviously there was so many different things like, you know, like fat and stuff like that and like uh, eat it but I mean like the thing that immediately goes like my brain goes to is when the Transformers movie the Transformers movie and when I heard Dare to be Stupid yeah. I swear I thought he was I thought that was two different people on that song for the yeah. longest time I thought that was two different people on that song and like just like that song, just, you know, just not only just was it cool because it was in the Transformers movie, but it was just like awesome to be able to hear somebody who had such a cool range. You know what I mean? They didn't have yeah. to sound exactly the way that, you know, the same all the time, you know, and like yeah. just the, you know, obviously the subject matter of the song, Dare to be Stupid. You know, I uh, I approve. I think it's a great title subject for a song. It I is. live. I live my life by it. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> um. So so Lisa, darling. Um. So while your brother's listening to or watching the Transformer movies, I think you've seen it before, haven't you? Have you seen Transformer movie? You know, I I vaguely remember stuff when it comes to yeah. That. You are a baby. It exposed me to so much. I can only recall maybe an eighth of everything. Oh my gosh. But I all uh, the that, but when it regards to Weird Al, the first thing I always think about is Ray Jeffrey. That's how I remember listening to him, was having to watch the movie with Will. And that was my exposure, my first yeah. exposure that I recall. So that's awesome. Um, it definitely was something that um, it wasn't for everyone. It was it was a milestone, I think, uh, in his career for him to make um, the movie that was. Um, You know, to be a legacy, to be a cult classic years yeah. later. Uh, because when you watched it, you kind of thought, uh, what? Um, 
And no, he you, a, I he thought it was great. Really cool. <laughs> it, it was great. And he had a lot of really good comedians in there, a lot of really good, you know, regular actors too. He you know, like a lot of TV actors and things like that. And to get Kevin McCarthy, you know, to play the boss, I mean, if anybody knows Kevin McCarthy, he's a very serious dramatic actor. I mean, he was in um Invasion of the Body Snatchers. He's the one running around screaming at people, they're here. <laughs> I still to this day can I I just I can't help myself especially because Katie corrects me so much she's like we don't call women bitches and I'm like never call chicks broads <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah and who doesn't you know walk into a closet and go surprise <laughs> surprise <laughs> or uh, what's that what is it my favorite uh the one that uh when he's talking about the uh the box you know what's in the box <laughs> nothing it's nothing is in the box you're stupid <laughs> lesbian nazi hookers abducted by aliens and forced into slavery next week on town talk <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dun, 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 <laughs> oh my God! We could just go on forever just on that alone. Oh yeah, Hi. no, for real. <laughs> you really? <laughs> These <laughs> floors are dirty as hell. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we're actually here today not to even talk about the movie. We're here to talk about his music, but we're also here to celebrate a movie about him. His next movie. His next movie is my that I've been waiting for it to come out like forever. I'm like, can you yeah. can you tell me when the movie's coming out? Can you tell me when the movie's coming out? Can anyone tell me when the movie's coming out? I know, right? Later. I thought I thought it was supposed to be September eighth. That's the best. Right. I have to do this. I think every episode. I don't know why. Sorry. I gotta I gotta take this. Can anyone tell me when the movie's coming out, please? I know, right? <laughs> Get smart. <laughs> oh my gosh. But yeah, I I don't know what's holding it up, but um, but here today, you know, we're gonna pay homage to the man himself, the parody king. Uh, there have been a few. There was actually a, a Christian one, the Christian guy that um marked something or other that did parody the Christian song. He was actually really good. He um he wrote uh, Mary Did You Know, but um I don't think anyone has reached the pinnacle that Weird Al has in poking fun uh, at mainstream music. Um, if I could relay a, just a little tidbit of trivia that I discovered on YouTube, um, apparently the reason why he did um fat. He didn't want to do another Michael Jackson song. It had nothing to do with the fact that he, you know, that they got along really well. Um, wanted to move further and do things more exploratory and things like that. Um, but apparently Polka Party bombed big time. And his record label uh, said that, okay, you're, your title, not the title track, but uh, Living with a Hernia wasn't doing very well. And, Oh, I thought that song was great. I used to sing that all the time. I didn't even know what a hernia was when I was a kid. But I'm just like <laughs> dancing around like I'm fucking James Brown. <laughs> I could get two different kinds. <laughs> now that I'm older, though, I know all about hernias. Just yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, you know, the, the end of it, you know, when he's doing, and, and I guess James Brown just really loved it. I mean, he loved, you know, the parody of his song, Living in America. And, um, the end of it is like, I feel bad, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Got to have an operation. <laughs> He's so old. <laughs> <laughs> I lost everybody. I'm back. Oh. Hello. <laughs> Hello. We'll have to cut that out. We won't. You found uh, me. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I lost everybody. But um, so then, uh, then he. The record label gave him a second chance, and uh, that's when, 1987, 
And that's what he, I guess he, I guess Michael Jackson came out with the whole like mini movie with, um, you know, Wesley Snipes and you know, he's this kid coming back from being in this, you know, fancy school and everything. And I, you know, thought he wasn't street anymore and he wasn't bad. And, you know, uh, Weird Al said just something. Just like, he's just like, it just came to me like. And so I just started writing the lyrics down. He's like watching. And you know, he's a perfectionist. So he's going to have like all the movement. And they, the guy actually put up, uh, mirrored both videos. And it's just the, as if they recorded them side by side. Uh, with all the mo- movements and everything. And the sound effects and the crotch grabbing, you know. Well, you only grab so much crotch when you have like five feet of stomach in front of you. But, um, yeah, but um, I guess he said that the once he was in makeup and costume, he was in it all day long. And the uh, while the fat suit was only 19 pounds, he's like, it was like your own personal sauna. So mm-hmm. that's every day was you know a nightmare while they were filming. But um, I used to so, wear one of those suits. But it was attached to me. I know. I knew it was symbiotic. Yeah. It, I remember like, that. Like venom. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, you could call it just venom. Yeah, and thank you for putting your shirt back on. Oh, you anytime. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. I'm sorry. I don't know. I don't know which one. I, I'm grateful. <laughs> Shirtless, whatever standing in you were doing. <laughs> <laughs> I got studio, I like, oh, we know some people that were very disappointed. <laughs> I know, right? It's okay. I'm not gonna mention any names. But um, so with this, with our new, our uh, newfound love for all over again for Weird Al, and and he's had so many albums, and a lot of his stuff started early in the '80s. Uh, I think he did, you know, another one rides the bus. And then my Bologna, and there was, I mean, the album started, and then he, he really just took off because I think the more, um, the more he started to write, the more prolific he became, and the more better, <laughs> if that's a term, it's not, I know, he became at it. I mean, he just really did himself justice. And I don't know about you guys, but I know you said, that dare to be stupid is that your favorite weird al song really? no that's that's probably the one that like when i go back and think about the first like remembrance i have of weird al. if i had to say my favorite weird al song man that's like uh trying to pick my favorite action figure you know what i mean i could tell you the first action figure i ever got my favorite <laughs> one though uh i'll be back in five days <laughs> <laughs> It is. There's just so many of them. And honestly, I feel like um, <laughs> I would probably have to pick like I don't know. It's not going to be one that, that's like everyone likes because it's like, I don't know. I really like like as far as like the way that he just like I know because there's so many people that would be like oh white and nerdy or you know what I mean like you know like some of those things but I mean like I like um the one so it would be between the one that he did the the Star Wars one which was Billy yeah. Joel uh mm-hmm. the Billy Joel parody or it would be the one that I think was an original song uh, that's my horoscope you know horoscope oh you know? horoscope that, yeah yeah I think I that think that's yeah, that is- that, it would be between those two. Like that's what. But dare to be stupid is definitely right after those ones. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Lisa Marie, yeah, you're older now, and you've actually accompanied us to a, to a few of his concerts. Well, oh. you- yeah. Well, it's like watching poetry in motion. <laughs> But yes, you were in a lot of those experiences for the world because watching my brother get all fangirly over his 
title. I don't fangirl over many people. That's uh, literally like it's I like this one. I didn't get to see Tommy, but I got to see that one, and that was pretty fucking hilarious. Excuse my language, but I just say it was pretty uh, good. <laughs> so, which one is yours? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm very secular. I like Tommy's Paradise. It's I like songs, so yeah. To me, I was like, I like Jason Paradise, I like all the Paradise. So I was like, that is a good one. That is definitely a good one. Uh, I liked it because I like the video as well, yeah. you know, because it was you know very on point. But it was also it, really funny too. Right, and then Florence Henderson sitting there, and she's playing the part of Michelle Pfeiffer. Yeah, and it's just like. <laughs> It's the Brady Bob! <laughs> yeah. That's so funny because a lot of the kids parody like all the stuff now. Like that's the thing. You know, like he started it like way back then, but now that's like everything. You parody originals and videos and then the video, you parody the video of the video. <laughs> it's like yeah. everybody all the time now. Yeah. And it's and it's true to life too because um, we have a tendency to take ourselves a little too seriously. I don't know anybody like that. Oh, not me. <laughs> <laughs> I was never take myself serious my whole entire life. <laughs> I was literally playing toys before I got on the call, so. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Wait, is that Vegeta? It is. Oh, that's my favorite. Hey. <laughs> These people got a nice thumbs up going on. <laughs> hey. My favorite sarcastic saying. Oh, he's a super saiyan, actually, isn't he? Damn right. I don't know don't, certain things, but... Don't forget it. No, no, I won't, because, my God, it's the mouth on that guy. Mm. <laughs> anyway, um, so, I guess I could, I could probably put my choice in, in a bit of a nucleus, um, and actually narrow it down to one. Even though I've listened to many of the albums several times, uh, Mandatory Fun actually got me through uh, quite a difficult time in my life in, uh, when it came out in 2014, I think. So, um, it was, I only listened to two albums that year, Mandatory Fun and Age of Innocence by U2. So, anyway, all right, uh, my favorite song comes from the Dare to be Stupid album and it's uh, One More Minute and the first time he did that live I lost my shit <laughs> I honestly thought that it was like one of those songs that he would skip over and just do the hit and he, when, he, when I heard the music coming in and in the back I was like oh my god I know that song is so awesome. It's so <laughs> freaking hilarious. Like every second of it, it's like I feel everything that this man is saying. <laughs> then he he does another one too, and and whenever he does, if anyone's ever seen him on stage, which I know all of my everybody that's watching this is seen him. Um, oh, it's like watching poetry in motion, dude. He he lives out his music videos on the stage, like it's he does. Amazing. Uh, he costume he gets, changes. Oh, I know, it's, and he's fast too. He's yeah. huge. He's hugely fast. And then he does the uh, when he does the, and I can't remember the song. I'd ask somebody over here, but I have a fire, so I could say Alexa. And I'm not going to answer that. Yes. <laughs> just fucking with you, Alexa. Anyway. <laughs> he, does, he does a big white suit. And he talks about, nobody's sure what I do here. And I'm just all right with me. You know, and he's got the big white, big shouldered suit on. It's a parody of uh, a talking head song. And I can't think of it. But... I love that one because he's talking about being in an office. Uh, and, you know, of course, I've always worked in an office. So, he's like, this is not my beautiful stapler. This is not my beautiful stapler. <laughs> <laughs> it's so 
holy shit. How could you do that? But he does. He does. And he takes some of the best songs and turns them into TV rants and food rants and, you know, um, talks about taking the garbage out when he doesn't want to. You know? <laughs> shit Dude. like that. So some some of the songs that he makes it's just i i just be wondering what he was like what like so okay so obviously like what like what was the inspiration like he's just like sitting there that's why i want to see the movie so bad is because like what you're just like listening to the song and you were like you know like you're like i think i'm a clone now and then you just write a whole entire song yeah about that you know what i mean like it's like and it, it's just like it, it's not that he writes a song like a lot of people like anybody can do a parody you know what i mean but the thing is is that when you listen to most people parody a song they're just like the re- this is the reason why he's the greatest and no one's you know beat him is because of the fact that he literally you do, you're not listening to a guy sing a parody song you're listening to a person channel the character of the person that's singing yeah. the song like you actually feel like he's a clone and he's mm-hmm. singing about him being a clone. You 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 feel like, you know what I mean, like the that that the way that he takes on, you know, you feel like he's an Amish guy singing about Amish things, you know. I mean, obviously it wasn't too hard for him to channel a white and nerdy dude, but you know, what I mean, like, you know. Then for backup he had an extra <laughs> with Donny Osmond. I thought that was that surprised me. That totally surprised me because I really kind of always looked at Donny Osmond as somebody who's like uptight and and really? like straight laced. <laughs> we were just talking about that the other day. He's um, he's pretty funny. Very serious person, but he also has it's so cool. And when it regards that video, you know. Jerry Allen didn't know what he was doing back then. He was just letting him do his thing. And I've watched the behind the scenes on it. And Donnie talks about it. And he's like, I was just winging it. <laughs> was yeah. Well, winging there. Well, yeah. And, and with something like that, I think if you have the moxie in yourself, you know, I mean, clearly, you know, Donnie Osmond was a superstar. He was like 10. 11. It was like, Michael Jackson, Donny Osmond, who's better? You know, with all the team mags back in the day, it was like their face was always on the cover. Sometimes they'd throw poor, you know, uh, homeboy in there. I can't even think of his name right now. The kid from the Partridge family. What's his name? Not Danny Bonaduce. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Sorry. Sorry, David. But uh, they would throw him in just for the hell of it, you know, just to, you know, like, to make, like, a triangle circle instead of a... And we always knew it was, was it Donny Osmond or was it Michael Jackson. And Donny Osmond was all, like, straight-laced, and, and they sang about puppy love and things like that. Like, when they did Crazy Horses, I thought, oh, oh my God, oh, you guys are blasphemous. But you almost sound, you almost sound like a rock band. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> you know the Jackson are like A B C, you know we're getting down and all this stuff and and for uh, for Osmonds they're just white anyway. They <laughs> probably would be as white. But, <laughs> like, that's all they were allowed to be. You know they couldn't have any soul or funk or anything like that. They but, it, they, like, yeah. Oh, I know. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, so they were allowed to do like which is bizarre. In itself, because fucking uh, the Jacksons are uh, Jehovah Witnesses, so it's just like, what the hell? <laughs> you know, you got the Battle of the Religions and the Battle of the Pop Stars and the Battle of the Pop Religions. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> of course, I am a was born. <laughs> yeah, so it's just it was just a combination of everything. But to see him, you know, lose his self. <laughs> Yeah, and, and uh, white nerdy. That was that was just great. So, and I really appreciated uh, any time Weird Al would bring in a celebrity, you know, on on his uh, in his music videos because then it just gave it that little extra punch. Not that it needed it, 
he didn't need extra people or extra, you know, celebrity. What do you call those cameos? He didn't need any cameos. And- it was just it was icing on the cake. You know what yeah. I mean? It was totally. Because you know, oh, truthfully, if you take icing off of a cake, it's still cake. Yeah, it's still just as good. It's just not as much added sugar. Exactly. But um, and then you know, through so throughout the eighties, you know. Like I said, Polka Party is still a good album. Dare to be Sue is a good album. Um, anytime he did any of the polka medleys for the popular songs. And this is why I always like his albums, because he stayed true to his roots. Um, when years ago, when they used to have magazines that you could read without ads. Um, <laughs> what are those? I, okay. <laughs> paper and they have pages and they have pictures but i remember reading an article about him and his and i don't know if they'll bring this up in the movie but there was a door-to-door salesman that was selling accordions and guitars and um alex was the accordion and i thought to myself okay but um, he made it work. <laughs> it's a bold move, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for a bold strategy. <laughs> but how How many people other than, I can't think of his name, he used to play on uh, Lawrence Welk years ago. He was an amazing accordion player. Um, Iron Florin or somebody like that. He was Swedish. But he had a lot going on as far as the accordion. And for him in that day and age in Linwood, California, um, to choose that, that showed that he had the determination to do something special. I mean, he knew he was going to do something special. And to do something special, I think you want to do something different. Yeah. Well, yeah. Different. I mean, yeah. isn't he like an only child or something like that? Yes, he was. he's Jewish, right? So, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not the classic, you know, lonely New York boy syndrome, but I mean, the lonely California boy syndrome, and that's what it was. You wanted to be huh. so. Adam, I mean, who would have thought? You know what I mean? Like any of that. You know, it's just I think yeah. he was born this person, and he just wanted to be like sharing it with everybody, so everybody could be little weird, you know, no, no norm, you know. Oh, yeah. Think out of the box. Live out of the box. There's no box. Yeah. Well, especially during the time so back then, like, I, I don't, um, like, you know, feel any, you know, like, I do feel like I was a pioneer, you know what I mean? Because now everybody's into nerd shit. Yeah. Everyone's a dork. Like you had, like if you're, like you're not cool if you don't know what Game of Thrones is and Dungeons and Dragons and all these things. You know, back when I was a kid, I used to get made fun of. Everyone made fun of me for being a nerd, like because I liked these things. Like I, I because I liked Marvel. I remember, you know, when we were on the school bus and you brought the weird out tape, the one with the lasagna. Yeah, and we had everybody on the bus listening to it. And they, for a second, they were going to start making fun of us like they normally did. But I mean, you know, eventually they got into it. But I mean, you're talking about a bus full of urban kids who've never heard anything other than, you know, Tupac and Snoop Dogg and you know, N.W.A. or whatever. I mean, that's what we were fighting against. You know, <laughs> I can only yeah. imagine what Weird Al. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know I mean? Now nowadays yeah. everyone's a nerd, but I yeah. remember, right. you know, he helped me feel like I, you know, I had a place that I belonged. You know what I mean? Long before I ever belonged. You know, that's what yeah. back when I was a fat little nerd with an afro wrapped in a lion blanket. You know what I mean? Cheetah print blanket. You know, playing Final Fantasy and you know stuff like that. You know, watching my my goofy <laughs> cartoons. <laughs> Watching gargoyles on the, uh, you know, uh, Dis- the Disney Channel or whatever. Well, yeah, um, Pirates of Dark Waters. Oh my God, yeah, I've just, mm. I just, 
<laughs> but basic now. <laughs> uh, what did you say, dear? I said he's basic now because everybody's like how he was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You 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 pulled a lot of people up by their bootstraps and said, "Come with me. <laughs> be be nerdy and goofy, and I'll show you the world." You know, kind of a thing. And it, and it is because nerds, even back then, nerds were ostracized. I mean, you know, Revenge of the Nerds. I mean, they had movies about it. Every movie that they had that involved like kids or teenagers or something. It was just like, you know, the jocks and the nerds and, yeah. and you know, the people like that were, you know, they were segregated. You know, in my school, they, they had everybody. Okay. So you had like the science club. Okay. That was, you also had the drama team. They were nerds. And then you had like all the gangsters. Like all the Mexican gangsters were on in the front of the school, and then you had the Crips and the Bloods. They, well, they weren't together, but you know they had their own little nucleus. And then of course you had the Samoans, and and then you had like the football players and, and all the athletes, and you know it was just like everybody had their own little clique. And to be able to have access to all of that, because I owe allegiance to no one. <laughs> to this day, um, I would make the rounds. It was like, hello, hello, we're all the bathos today. Everybody's good. Yep, shoes are on point. Nice t shirt. You know, go over to Samoa and tell you, how was the game last night? You know, how's everybody? How's your mom doing? Blah, blah, blah. You know, and just all around the quad, you know, just visiting. And I'd even say hi to the nerds, even though they were kind of a little over my head because they had brains. And um, I didn't quite know how to deal with that. So. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I kind of have brains, but I don't have as many as you do. But and it was true. It was the glasses and the parted hair, a little pocket protector for your pens, and you know all this stuff. But I would love to go back and see that now. I would love to be able to go back as me and see what it looks like now. I'm sure it's probably you know still split, you know, with all the clicks. But something kills me. They might actually have like a little intermingling, you know, like a little mixer at break or lunch or something like that. Just like yeah. a nerd comes to a jock and says, Hey, how's it going? Uh, how's that, you know, such and such coming out in science? Oh, if you can give me some help with that, that'd be great. You know, because nerds had their place. Uh, they were most of the tutors. Tutor their own students. So they would assign people to tutor you. But, um, but yeah, so weird. Bruno was was like that. He was a catalyst for, you know, people ostracized everywhere. Yeah. You know? And and he took it and ran with it and made the best parody music. I mean, when he first came out, you know, I think it was Doctor Demento that discovered him and put him on his show, and yeah. he did another one, Rides the Bus, and um, and then of course he did I Love Rocky Road. I don't, but, you know, I appreciate <laughs> the parody. Um, and then, of course, you know, he just expanded. You know, he took mainstream by storm and thought, okay, who can I fuck with now? <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> I'll choose you. <laughs> and then he would take um, whoever was massively popular then, Madonna. Although in the movie it makes you look is makes it like she came to him. I'm not really sure, but um, that part of the trailer. Yeah, I know. Because I mean, come on, Madonna, you have like every guy. Like you're not too really like. I know. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know. Good on good on Weird Al if that's true, you know. Oh, because I guess it put him in a dark spot. Oh. Well, yeah, and 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 you know what culture on YouTube basically it's not a part of him because he was yeah. always very sticking to his guns about his image, the way that he you know presented himself, didn't do drugs or alcohol that. About it, well, like, you know, whatever, whatever. But the movie is going to show parts of him that he 
weren't privy to. So it's like seeing that other side, it's a little Yeah, it's a little disheartening. I'm pretty it's sure the movie is gonna be a little bit of a parody also, you know. I mean like it I'm, would it, it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, because the whole entire movie is, you know, the basis of the movie was derived from a funnier die trailer that they did. I want it to be real, but I just don't want it to be, you know. Well, it was like the 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 basis of the movie was derived off of a funnier die trailer that they did for a Weird Al movie that had uh the the guy who plays uh Jesse Pinkman and um. Breaking Bad. I forget his name. Uh, okay. I know who you're talking about. I just don't know who he is. Yeah. It's. You're you're to phone. <laughs> yeah, but I uh, I'll remember if I think about it because I know the the okay. guy was Brian Cranston. Jesse Pinkman. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's uh Brian Cranston and uh, Aaron Paul. That's his name. Um, I knew it would come to me eventually. Well, I knew it would come to me eventually. I got all that stuff stored up there. I'm just trying to forget it so I can start remembering math for my GED. Um, <laughs> so. Sorry. Oh, yeah, no, the, tra- the trailer was uh, it had Aaron Paul in it, and then it had Olivia Wilde. That's a, the okay. girl who played in Tron, I think it was. The okay. Tron. Yeah. The the newer tra- she's been in a bunch of other stuff too, but uh yeah and so it just it was funny it even the trailer even had Weird Al in it you know he played like a record executive and yeah. um, it had Patton Oswalt as Doctor Demento and it was oh, yeah. Uh, yeah you never saw that trailer for the Funny or Die the Weird Al movie or Weird it was called Weird I thought I did I may have I may it have- was hilarious because Aaron Paul was just like he was doing such a good and I I hope Daniel Radcliffe catches that captures that same energy because you could tell it was a parody trailer but it was like you know his story but they obviously exaggerated some things you know what I mean like when he was freaking out on his band and they're like you changed man and he's like I'm the weird one (laughs) Uh, yeah exactly I'm the one Oh my gosh. And his band is extremely talented too. Oh, and yeah. All of them within their own right. Um, and I love, you know, when, when he comes, uh, you know, see him, see them all on stage and, you know, they all get in. I think they all kind of get into costume. I think, well, last, they do the costume changes too. Yeah. Yeah. The last um, one that I remember. Um, What's this song you were telling me? Is it um? Bye, my Tyrannican guy. Yeah, the later, Star Wars one. Later, later. Yeah, that's a parody of American Pie by Don. Mer- oh, I thought that was Billy Joel for some reason. My bad, messed up the people. Why that didn't with me? I was like, what Billy Joel? <laughs> <laughs> my bad. Uh, Billy Joel was the uh. Piano Man, my bad. Yeah. I always get those two songs mixed up. That's okay. That's okay. Um, but you made a guy and gave him an idea if he's watching. Um, <laughs> um, but then they would come out and they'd have the the robes on and everything, and then oh the yeah, troopers would come out, and then he actually had weird, you know, weird now, <laughs> weird Vader came out and. Uh, I um to this day I still tell that story. Um I was so disappointed. And do you still have that picture? Cuz I I never I don't remember who took the picture. I don't know if you took it Lisa or if William took it. But I remember it was at the fair and the show was over and the stormtroopers came out with all the audience, you know, was shaking their hands and doing selfies and stuff like that and everybody ran over to uh Lord Vader to get choked out um and uh i thought it was so cool because i remember you know taking pictures i released a you know he did the you know thing on the throat and I think, you know you had one as well and i wanted i wanted in on it because it was just like i wasn't supposed to have a favorite villain in the star <laughs> like, yes i like Darth Vader. um i have it somewhere and 
away. Yeah, but then it was just like, okay, so I never told the story so many times, but so here we are, we're on the grass, you know, and everybody's like milling about, everybody's, you know, going their own way, going out back to the fair. And it's just like, oh, I want, I want a picture with Darth Vader. You know, and I'm standing there, you know, waiting to be like, and he does this. And I'm like, what? You did the cute mom pose? What? I don't want a cute mom pose, damn it. I want to get <laughs> I want to be forced choked. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with you? You're fired. So, so bad, Mr. Vader. <laughs> <laughs> You're terrible. You're not Darth Vader. <laughs> you ain't fat. You ain't you nothing. Ain't nothing. <laughs> you ain't nothing. <laughs> that face he does. Oh, my God. Oh, goodness. Oh, man. So, uh, <laughs> any party words? About, I know this is supposed to be out in the 80s, but, you know, you really can't relegate him to one decade because he's, no, he's been, just... been here forever. Dude, it's like, it's like, what were you going to say? No, I, I stopped talking and Lisa said, I said sure. <laughs> for he's, sure. He's and just, uh, I was just going to say any party words on uh, anything Weird Al related. Oh, just, I mean, I, I just hope that he keeps on. I hope that this movie gives him a, like, that he's got a nice new album ready to go for, you know. Yeah. for everything you know like that's a hope he you know i love that he's doing original music i really like it and that's a, i just hope he keeps you know keeps doing the parodies too and obviously there's probably challenges with that because of like the way that music has changed from back in the day with you know music going digital you know places like spotify you know i mean like youtube being a thing you know but i I just hope he keeps, you know, knocking out parodies of really popular songs, you know, like I just would love to see him channel that, you know, yeah. that old, old nerd and, you know, get in there and show these young bucks what, what it's like to make real music. Exactly. For sure. They have a new generation of fans. Uh, Gigi, my son, he was really disappointed during the pandemic when they had to cancel the concert because he wanted to go, which was really bad. Oh, wants to go see him. It's really bad. And I didn't even introduce him to Weird Al. He just found him on the road. And it's just Isn't that great? Genetical instincts. Like I must. Yeah. <laughs> and he listens to some pretty weird things. They're not even songs half the time. Half the time they're in a um, foreign language. <laughs> and they're, yeah. Uh, from yeah. <laughs> so this day. Like, oh no, continue. Continue. No, I was just gonna say he's a very eclectic music selection. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean one of the things that still makes me laugh to this day is I don't I don't know, I never heard the original version, but the good old days when he's like talking about all the crazy stuff in the song. So yeah. I tied her to a chair and I shaved off all her hair and I left her in the desert all alone. Oh, sometimes in my dreams I can still hear her screams. Oh, I wonder if she ever made it home. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, what did you? What was going through your mind when you came up oh, with that? I know. Right? He had a lot of vengeance in him. I'm telling you, when he talks about. You know, St Melanie, you know, when he's talking about stalking the poor, poor girl. My favorite parody uh, in the 21st century was when um, he did uh, Do I Creep You Out um, from <laughs> the guy. And I love it because I didn't like who they chose. That's when I stopped watching American Idol. Uh, when they chose the second best person <laughs> to I win. I watching it when my boy Clay Akers didn't get his right pull. And then they did my Adam Lambert dirty, so. Wow, that, that was a minute. You well, guys watched American Idol? Yeah. No. I'm <laughs> it's for it's like a. Dorothy didn't win, and then whoever that, the weird guy with the big butt. Uh, that uh, Paula Abdul loved his quirky dancing, and I just thought, 
Yeah. And he made that song. And then Weird Al <laughs> Terry, do you know, I creep you out? And the video is just. Huh? Huh? Asian guy? No, I'm talking about. No, no, no. I'm talking about the, the tall Caucasian gentleman with white hair. I'm about to. Oh, I wasn't. Just so you, mother, that that didn't narrow anything down. That's <laughs> <laughs> you know the guy that does that stuff. You know the dude with the thing, the one that does the, the stuff. You know, I thought he's like the guy. You know, that freaking guy. That guy. That's the guy. <laughs> I know. I usually say something like, you know, homeboy that was in, you know, whatever. That one but, movie. I'll think of his name later on. <laughs> I'm the dude, man. The dude, yeah, exactly. But in the comments. <laughs> oh my god! But um, so everybody out there in uh, podcast land, thank you so much. <laughs> you can tell I'm wrapping it up. Um, <laughs> like a Trojan. Like <laughs> <laughs> giggity. Giggity, yeah. So, uh, get out there and uh, get on Spotify or um, YouTube or Pandora. Even I think he's there as well. Um, and find your uh, find your favorite. Make a favorite. Make a new favorite Weird Al song. Listen to his words. They are definitely words of wisdom. Um, speaking of words, uh, I need some words from the two of you. Uh, yeah. Ladies first, where can we find you on the social media? I am on Instagram, Lady Lee eighty four. And on Facebook, one and only Lisa Marie. Absolutely, this is very true. She is. And Sir Williams. I got F words. I got S words. I got a uh, no. <laughs> I'm on uh, Instagram as uh, Darth Bellius. And I am on Facebook as William Cologne. Uh, I think I have a Twitter, but I don't ever use it. I haven't used it for a long time. Uh, just to make fun of Jay Inslee and Joe Biden every once in a while. Um, but uh, and then I oh, believe God. I <laughs> and then I, I think I have what's the other one? Uh, yeah, no, that's uh, Snapchat isn't really. You have that's not. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I have a Twitch. Yeah, that's what I stream on Twitch. If you want to watch somebody, if you want to watch somebody play League of Legends, amazingly bad. You should come uh, check out Tycoon Will. It's Tycoon Will with one L. That's yeah. what. Uh, yeah, that's what. If you if you're any good, you can come join the games and uh, play with me. And if not, you can just you know watch and cry for a while. So that, there's that. <laughs> well, um, I could probably watch, but. It, it won't be very long because my attention span as I get older is just very. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, a flower. Yeah. A bird. That was me yesterday at the fair. I was like, oh, flowers. <laughs> and then I'm in the flower thing and I'm like, don't I have children somewhere? Oh, God, there's two of them. Like, <laughs> I know, right? Jeez. Where did I leave them? <laughs> uh, so, and keeping with the back. What? They all made it home safely. <laughs> That's the point. Everybody made it home safely. Yeah. So, they were, so they were abandoned for a couple of hours. I mean, um, <laughs> they lived. Oh my God. Speaking of being abandoned, I don't know if you guys have seen. Did you watch the pitch meeting for Pinocchio? I did not because I don't plan on oh. watching that movie. Oh, you gotta. I'm sorry. This is a mandate from on high. You have got to at least watch the pitch meeting. <laughs> okay. I'll watch the pitch meeting, but I won't know what they're talking about because I don't I don't plan on watching the movie. It's okay. You don't need to know what they're talking about because Brian George has like 95 words that he pronounces incorrectly for Pinocchio. He can't say the word Pinocchio. And so it's just like... Oh, so he's just like calling Filopino or Pinocchio? No, it has to do with a... It's always a P-I-N word. Like, oh, so pineapple chai yeah to school and you know it's like wait a minute he says the, the the producer goes what do you mean he goes to school he was just created like one day and his 
Geppetto sends him off to school? Does he go with him? He goes, no, he doesn't. And he's like, but he's already lost a child. Why is he going to send him out into the world by himself? He's like, is he afraid for his um, uh, safety? And, you know, the guy says, hey, shut up. So anyway. <laughs> we don't have anything to worry about as long as there aren't any woodpeckers in the vicinity. I know, right? <laughs> Anyway, so uh, watch the pitch meeting. You'll love it. I will. I will. Thank you. So I am 80s Music Girl on Twitter. Uh, I am back on Twitter now, everyone. Thank you. I know I've been gone for a very, 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 very long time. But it happens. Uh, I am. Hold on. Go Eating. check her out. Lest I yeah. hunt you down and find you. Oh. I'm also 80s Music Girl on Instagram. I'm 80s Music Girl. I have a fan page on Facebook that's growing rapidly. I almost have 3,000 fans. I have no idea where they're coming from because only 10 people react to anything that I post on there. I know, right? I know. It's great. So it's all about the numbers, people. It's all about the numbers. It's all about the numbers. So thank you so much, uh, my dear. I'm 80s Music Girl uh, at the Thunderbird on Tuesday nights for karaoke. So. (laughs) (laughs) funny. That's awesome. I love that. Anyway, I love you guys. Thank you so much for everything. I love you too, Mama. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. Thanks for coming. And thank you, Miss Lisa, uh, for everything that you do. And I'm going to get the second episode out tomorrow. Yay! (laughs) Mm -hmm. I'm going to stop recording now.